Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move over to present day city of Lawrence, located in Douglas County, Kansas, for what is called the Lawrence Massacre, not to be confused with the sacking of Lawrence in 1856. This occurred on August 21st, 1863. In what would be written in history as a historic atrocity and universally reviled in modern day, the massacre at Lawrence, Kansas was perpetrated by the Confederate guerrillas known as Quantrill's Raiders and led by Captain William C. Quantrill, an ex-school teacher and thief who deserted the Confederate Army under General Sterling Price and formed a guerrilla group determined to follow his own interpretation of the Confederates' great cause. He began conducting raids against both civilian and Union military, but his preference was always civilians. Opposing him were the civilians of Lawrence, Kansas, who were for the most part unarmed due to other raids earlier in the war. There was no victory today, just a horrific atrocity. Quantrill had focused on Lawrence, Kansas because Lawrence had a very strong history of supporting abolition and anti-slavery, both politically and through Jayhawker organizations, which spent their time rooting out Confederate guerrillas and pro-slavery civilian forces in the area. To be clear, there were definitely Jayhawker raids that were criminal and would be considered war crimes as well. In August of 1863, Union Command was focused on Quantrill's raiders due to the constant small tax by Quantrill on both the military and civilian infrastructure along with the aid provided to Quantrill from Confederate sympathizers, especially in western Missouri area. Union authorities began imprisoning female family members of known Quantrill's raiders, trying to force those individuals to stop raiding. Accidents occurred, especially in Kansas City, where makeshift jail supporting beams were removed to house more prisoners. The building collapsed and killed and maimed several women, which outraged the raiders even more. Quantrill de Raiders arrived at 5 a.m. on August 21st along with other Raider groups as they had all planned that day to arrive far in advance. Arriving from multiple directions, the Raiders converged outside of Lawrence. The average Raider was armed with multiple six-shot revolvers. As they rode into town, their first victim was pastor and lieutenant of the 2nd Kansas Colored Regiment named Samuel S. Snyder, who was milking his cows as they rode by and shot him dead. Quantrill's Raiders rode into town securing the Eldridge House a large brick hotel in the center of Lawrence. Once they secured the hotel, they broke up and fanned out in the town. Over the next four hours, they burned, pillaged, and raped as they went. They looted the banks and killed more than 150 people focusing on men and boys. One horrific aspect of this massacre was that Quantrill's raiders had entered a town with a list of men to be killed and buildings to be burned. They did not stick to the list, however, and began wantonly killing, looting, and burning as they went. The group traveling with Bloody Bill Anderson accounted for more than their fair share of deaths, including taking surrender from people and guaranteeing them safety and then executing them, including forcing people back into burning buildings. The youngest victim is believed to be a young boy of 10 years old named Bobby Martin. It should be noted that many Quantrill's raiders were young as well, the youngest being Riley Crawford, who is 13 years old. The raiders, who I want to remind you were not part of the actual Confederate Army, left town after several hours heading southwest. Senator James H. Lane, along with some of the survivors, gathered weapons and began pursuit of Quantrill's raiders. They were joined by Major Preston B. Plum and his 200 cavalry, where they overtook the raiders south of the town of Brooklyn, Kansas, and engaged multiple times with them. The following day, some of the town's survivors lynched a member of Quantrill's raiders who had been caught in town. Shortly after that, on August 25th, Union General Thomas E. Wing Jr. issued General Order 11, not the same as Grant's infamous General Order 11 that evicted thousands of Missourians in four counties from their homes near the Kansas border and systematically burned everything in order to deny the aid and succor to Quantrill's Raiders or other bushwhacker groups. This is a horrific step in retaliation, but it did seem to work as the vast majority of bushwhacker groups left the area and did not return. I do want to repeat though, that the act of evicting those people and burning everything without proof was horrific and its own type of war crime. It should be noted that while they do have a weird popularity and appeal, both Frank and Jesse James were part of the raid and part of Quantrill's raiders, signifying they were murderers, no matter what else you might think about them. A total of 164 civilians were killed by the raiders, representing roughly 20% of the town's male population and leaving 85 widows, while Union reinforcements and town survivors were able to kill 40 of Quantrill's men. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.